Terry, what was your initial, I mean, you guys happy, uh, obviously, to, to get this kind of process over with and to move forward to, to the next step? Yeah, well, it, it's been, you know, it's been going on since, uh, since August. And uh, once we got the invitation and acceptance by the board of directors of the Big 12, um, you know, we started negotiating with the, um, the American Athletic Conference, and uh, we, they had to pause a little bit because they were trying to get, they were also doing their own due diligence and also recruiting new members in as well. So um, it took a little time. So we really started to get back in, uh, onto the negotiations. Uh, maybe November, pause a little bit in December, started back in January, and, and you know, and just couldn't really come to a conclusion. And there was, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, when I say collegial grandstanding, uh, you know, people holding their grounds. Um, and uh, it was uh, um, it was good that we uh, ended on what we ended, and we feel really good about it. And uh, the main thing for the ADs, I, I'm not speaking on behalf of those, but I can say it's just you know trying to give your fan base, your student athletes, your coaches, uh, your key uh, stakeholders, uh, your alumni, everybody that's involved in your program, really some definitive uh, timetables now when you're entering. And uh, um, so I think we did that and I feel really good about it. How well does this timetable work with what UCF wants to achieve? That's uh, what we wanted. Uh, you know, I think uh, when we, we looked at the other schools, at least I did a little research when other schools left, Rutgers, Louisville, uh, UConn, UConn left two, two years uh, earlier. Uh, we were going to only be leaving one season earlier. Um, I, I think it, it works out really good. Um, we, we intended, I don't think the Big 12 was ready for us uh, this year anyway. Uh, even if we wanted to go in, that, that, that wouldn't have uh, been probably doable for them uh, just because of the conference schedules. It's really all about scheduling. It, that's, it's very uh, complex to do that. Um, you know, and from, for, for us, uh, we've been on an eight game conference schedule for football. And you know, when you have four non-conference games, then you have to start canceling games. Those are, you have buyout clauses and all that kind of stuff. So now, what, going forward, we'll be, we'll be planning for nine game conference schedule, and we'll only have three conference games. So that changes our uh, scheduling philosophy a lot in football. Um, won't really affect the other sports as much. But as, as you know, the lion's share of our revenue comes from football and the gate receipts. Uh, it's going to be, we're going to have to navigate through that. The $18 Very million dollar buyout, do you feel that's fair? I know some of it's backloaded. UConn paid significantly less and had less notice given. So how do you feel about that? Well, I think I think sometimes you trade time for money. And I think the uh, I think the, the terms were very fair uh, for both. And, um, you know, the three teams that are leaving are have a lot of value in, in, in this comp conference and very competitive. And, the, and this is a very competitive conference. So I think it, it, I think it worked out just fine. Uh, we're all happy to be moving on. And uh, we appreciate the leadership of the American Conference, uh, Mike Oresco and the, the board chair, and, and, and especially our presidents. And my mind in particular, my boss, Alex Cartwright, uh, to help navigate through these. He was a great sounding board. and. He was very um, active, he got really active at the end, and, and so we really appreciate him as well. Terry, how much of, of, of the, is it, or any of it, of the money, the exit fee, is coming from the Big 12, or is it all coming specifically? It's just, it, it, we're, we're responsible for it. Okay, you're the Athletic right. Association is, okay. yes. So that, I think that's really kind of important. This is, uh, this is an athletic association uh, of debt, and uh, the Athletic Association was the member of the Big 12, and uh, I signed the, the exit. Uh, yesterday and so um, so yeah we'll be responsible for it now that you just got to navigate that's why that's why this mission 12 uh, initiative that we put out is so important to the future of our program and the transition in the big 12 so we'll continue to navigate that we have that's why we have that microsite microsite on the our website uh, that talks about how the plan of the transition and I mean it's a it's a major funding not only are we trying to uh, we have the funding that we have to uh, take care of uh, on the exit, but we have, there's a buy-in in the Big 12, and then there's also 
all of the operating capital that you have to raise money for, the facilities and, and, and personnel. I mean, so the whole idea is to try to put all of our coaches in the top half, and we're doing that. The plan is working, and we're doing that with some of our coaches now, and we're still far away in some, in some of our sports. Can you expound on that a little bit? Yes. Yeah. How, how Mission 12 is moving along, yeah. and are you accomplishing your goals that you set out in the yeah, thank you. That's great. Um, so we put that out. We, we announced it to the public and our, and our uh, alumni and our and Night Nation, and, and people are, are reading it and they're and they're, uh, they're they're trying to help us. And so basically, what Mission Twelve is is basically we're going down three three parallel tracks. Uh, we have to raise our operating capital. That's the operating budgets of the, the department, uh, personnel, uh, salaries, and, and, and coaches, um, and then maintenance. Obviously, keep 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 the lights on, the doors open, keep our uh, our structures uh, sound, and then new new projects, capital projects, and so Mission Twelve is that initiative to help us with that. Um, right now, what we're focusing on is operating capital and, and personnel, trying to keep the coaches that we have, trying to keep get them into that top half of the Big Twelve if all possible. Uh, we're we're doing, I think, very well with our women's sports. It's easy to do that when we have really good coaches with our women's teams. And uh, we're, we're trying to, our, 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 some of our male sports um, are a little further away. A lot, a lot of that has to do with the, the, the rights fees they've been getting and the, the, the broadcast rights fees and the TV distributions they've been getting over the years as opposed to ours. Speaking of that, yeah. uh, when you join the Big 12, do you know what your media distribution will be for the two years You know, while this con TV contract is still in, in effect before for the, the next new two one? Years? For the next two yeah, years? Yeah, it's 18 and 19. Well, I, I've, I've talked about that in the press conference last August. Yeah. So, and, but think about it. Think about it. Everybody thinks, oh, you're getting, making all this much yeah. more money, but think about what the buyout is. Yeah. Think about the, what the buy-in is. Think about all the, your expenses you have. goes pretty fast, right? <laughs> so, When the new media deal kicks yes. in for the Big 12, in a couple of years, what does that do for UCF? Yeah, it's, it could really it could, it could really be a game changer for us. Um, and, uh, you know, we have to do our part with uh, uh, with the league is uh, we have to continue to be competitive. We've got to continue to uh, grow our emerging brand nationally. We need our fans watching our games. We need lots of eyeballs. We need attendance. And I think when you do all that, uh, then I think that's when the broadcast companies will come back and say that we've got to have this. This is a this is a major brand. They've got a lot of eyeballs. This is this can create a lot of value for our property. So 25, will you get a full media share from the Big 12? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. After the two years, then we'll be full full share members. Yeah. You, which which which. I, and, and listen, I'm not going to speak before, but the, the the current Big 12 members, you know, which we appreciate, you know, reduce some of their fees to get our our four teams in. So well, I don't take that lightly, and that there's a lot of. Uh, a gratitude on our part that they were allowed to do that. And they believe it. I was on a call today with the current Big 12, and they were, I mean, they're, they're over the moon. Everybody's really excited about it. Um, and we, I've been to a couple of Big 12 meetings uh, in the last few months, and just just talking to the ADs one-on-one, -on -one, the commissioner of the conference office, uh, presidents, again, they're all really excited about our not only all four teams, but you know the fact that we're bringing in the Florida market, and so this is this is a, a very exciting day that we can be definitive of when we're going to the Big 12. Terry, I know you and I have talked a little bit about scheduling, future scheduling yeah. for football, for instance. You were kind of on a pause because of all of this going on. Yeah. How much now does it help you ramp up your, your what you can get some teams? Well, you still stuff? gotta get teams to play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it, it, there, a lot of the teams are already, you know, already scheduled out. So. Through 2030, and so I'm trying to actually move some games, and I'm not getting a lot of ex success uh, with some of the teams. Um, our philosophy is going to change. When we were in the American, we were maybe trying to play a couple of autonomy five schools or power five schools in the non-conference to help us with the um, with the CFP rankings. Um, but now, when you're in this league and you're you're going to be battling every week. Um, you know, you're gonna, you probably don't want to play that many. You uh, want to probably play some more group of fives and, and, and maybe one. You get, the rule is in the Big 12, you have to at least play one. 
And we in 23, we don't have one right now. So we may have to get grandfathered in. Uh, we have Boise on the road. Uh, they may use that as a, the one because that's a, that's a tough road game for us. Uh, so we'll have, we're not going to add a game. We'll have three non-conference games then, and we'll wait for the nine-game schedule. And we'll do a rotation four and five. Uh, probably the first year in the Big 12, we'll have four Big 12 uh, home games and five on the road. Just because we're new. You've been part of those. You've, sorry, you've been part of those discussions. Yeah. I know with the Big 12 lately. Has there been talk about uh, going with divisions, those kind of things? Yeah, well, yeah. We've been. We, they've, okay. they've been great about asking our opinion. And you know, um, I, I haven't served on the college football playoff selection committee. Um, I'm all about whatever can make put our two best teams in the conference championship. Um, and uh, to, so we can have a chance to play in the final four, uh, the, 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 the playoff, the playoffs. Um, and so, you know, I think at that particular time, right, right, uh, based on that, I think right now probably no divisions is what would be my preference. Not to say I couldn't be swayed one, one way or the, the other way, uh, but that would probably just be my preference. Uh, but I'm not speaking on behalf of the Big 12, and and uh, um, and I think it gives you some flexibility. But you know. You know, I think the rotation of the games that you don't play, and then all, and this also is predicated on Texas and Oklahoma's when they're actually exiting as well. In Texas and Oklahoma, if they're in the league for the two years, you know, 23 and 24, what are the chances you think one of those two teams would potentially play a UCF, or do you think the legacy Big 12 schools just would want to keep those games? As much of a chance of playing Kansas, you know, or, or, or Kansas State or Iowa State, you know, so uh, you know, it just it just depends on the rotation. Um, you know, I'm trying to horse trade a little bit, see what that, see what can happen. Uh, but uh, um, uh, but yeah, I would say that uh, um, uh, you know, as of, I, I am told, you know, of course, you know, how this changes uh, could change tomorrow that they'll they'll be in the league the first year we're in. Obviously, the, the eye goes to football, but how much? So they're still in the meeting, so yeah. you know. So how much, you're good. How much does this change the entire athletic department, not just football? Changes everything. Uh, well, you know, and, I, and I'm going to quote my provost, Michael Johnson, Dr. Michael Johnson. He says, joining the Big 12 changes our academic profile at this university. So not only does it change athletics, who we recruit, the type of people we recruit, the revenues, the opportunities for more sponsorships, multimedia rights, um, this also changes the complexion of the academic profile of this university. And that's not my words, that's the academic professionals on our campus, so that's good to hear. I actually had that conversation with our president, Alex Carwright, yesterday. He goes, yeah, that's what he says, <laughs> that's exactly, and he agrees. And actually our dean, uh, Jarley, uh, has said it. I've done a couple of speaking engagements for his, his board, and he said this is, this is a game changer for us academically. So this is, uh, this is great. I mean, you, you saw that you know, even the magazines, in the, you know, the Streets of Smith magazine are putting us on the cover with Miami, Florida State, and, uh, uh, Florida. And, and so, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think we're, we, we've earned it. And uh, I think you're going to continue to see us be a strong uh, program in the future. When will you know the inaugural Big 12 football schedule? Is that something that the league hopes to release by late summer, fall, or? Well, I think what, what the first thing they're going to do is they're going to try to do a campus visit. I don't know if they're going to open up the media. We'll surely let you know. Uh, but like donors and constitu key constituents, um, civic leaders, all that stuff, because they're definitely going to do a, a campus tour. They're, they've already done BYU, of course, uh, because they didn't have. They don't. They're not in the league for football. They are in their other sports, um, and so. Um, you know, I think that this probably this summer, I guess probably maybe the summer of this fall, you'll probably start seeing a little bit of idea. Maybe not exactly the schedule, but at least the format, whether divisions or no divisions. Um, and um, so, you know, I think, uh, and I, I, you know, they, they've talked about, you know, you know, since we've got a really good geography now, and we've covered, what, three time zones, which is really good. From a, from a broadcast standpoint, is you know not trying to travel you know a far distance two games in a row. We've we gotten to those conversations like West Virginia doesn't go to BYU and Texas Tech back to back. You know those those type of formatting we're, we're talking about. So it's been good. Terry, you, you obviously schools like West Virginia, TCU for instance, went through this experience making the jump uh, in, into the, the Power Five conference. 
Have you spoken with those some of those people? This I was ago? actually in the league when they went, yeah, when they made the, when, jump, when yeah, they made the jump. So uh, this is my sixth conference realignment mm -hmm. since I've been uh, involved in college athletics. Um, no, I mean I saw what they I saw what TCU did when they came in the league, and um, you know when um, some of the teams left the league. Um, so I mean I, I I think you just you just it's really a funding model, uh, facilities, operating capital, um, and and and. and personnel is really what you're trying to hold on to. Uh, the difference is there was an NIL and transfer portals that, and that has changed and, and made a little bit more complex uh, as far as recruiting and, 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 and you know I think you'll start seeing the days of these palatial locker rooms and, and all these facilities will change a little bit because of NIL um, and it'll be more like a um, maybe like the NFL you were um, nice facilities but more, more about what kind of benefits you get outside of the uh, the athletic department with NIL. So, um, you know, we're we're all navigating this, so we're trying to figure it out. Do you have a sense of how much more the travel budget will be? I assume you'd have to charter well, to more it, places. It's not, it's not going to be that much. So you are already going to Tulsa. You know, you're already going to Tulsa. You're already going. You know, Iowa State, Kansas. I mean, you're going to Texas. Um, you're going to go on the road five times. You usually, you you might do that already. Um, you know, we're, I'm still focusing on playing as many games in Florida as possible this coming fall. Or only leaving the state three times. That's fantastic. And then hopefully in the future, um, 24. We'll hopefully we'll have uh, you know uh, at least 24. We'll have at least six home games in the you know the six. Six home games or six games in the state of Florida, hopefully. So um, you know we're trying to minimize that as much as. But I don't, I don't think it's you know. Like basketball is like chartering to some of these locales. You know, that, that's, that's that's the operating yeah. capital. Yeah, you know, in the Big Twelve, people charter. I mean, volleyball teams charter. Uh, sometimes softball teams charter. And so uh, you know what? And when you're when you're uh, going to some of the towns, and I've course been to most of these towns still water whether you know you can fly in Oklahoma City but if you can get in charter and get right out after the games you get home from class back in two hour two hours maybe home in your bed by 12 12 30 and you're up going to class the next day so we don't talk about academics that much since it's NIL so the academics is still a major focus here so I'm just telling you guys that I mean, how excited are you personally about this because when huh? you, you took the job you were excited about the opportunity anyway but to look at all the changes since you arrived going to the Big 12 a place you're very familiar with yeah. how exciting is that for you it's really exciting because um, I grew up in Kansas City and um, used to go to the Big 8 basketball tournaments used to go to a lot of the games in that area um, was it coached in the Big 8 um, when and then went the transition from Big 8 to Big 12 the first time when we merged with the Southwest Conference and then I was there the second time and uh, you know same same thing uh, you know the, had a conference realignment then and so the fact that uh, you know we I get to go back from my roots and I, I followed my whole, my whole childhood and why I became a huge college sports fan I went to camps at the University of Kansas, basketball camps. Larry Brown was the was the coach, so, you know, and so it's really cool. And then the the thing that I'm probably most excited about, they actually asked me this question in the meetings last week was, what, will you, do you guys think you'll, Jason Siegel's going to kill me when I when he hears me say this? What do you think about uh, hosting the basketball tournament? I said it would be hard for me to vote to, to move out of Kansas City because Kansas City. Men's bas men's women's basketball tournament is about as good of a tournament I've ever been around. So it's exciting to take our fans, our awesome fans, to Kansas City and to blow out that whole city, man. I can't wait to do that and, and to compete with our men's and women's teams. It is a fantastic tournament. So I, I get you can say I start smiling because it is so fun. The basketball tournament. There's not another basketball. I don't, they can say ACC. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. It's Big East. I don't want to hear it. It's a, it is the Big 12 basketball tournament is the best. It, you have all the concentrated fan bases right in that area. It just it is. I cannot wait for our fans to go up there. Having a definitive timeline, how does that affect the, the building projects, the football complex, everything that you want to do that's already on the calendar? Really, it's just more funding. You know, it's just, you just got to fund it. You got to find ways to fund it. And, you know, as you guys know, that uh, Florida is very 
our state is very restrictive, on, even like unlike the other two public schools that are coming in the lake. Um, you know, there's they have a little bit more, uh, from what I'm told, a little more fungibility with their dollars, state allocated dollars. Um, so we just got to navig navigate through it. So that's why that Mission 12. I'll go back to Mission 12. That's why we put that out there uh, earlier this this year to really illustrate our plan of what I mean. We, we're pretty specific on there. What we got to do, where we got to be in development, corporate dollars, where we got to be for capital dollars. I mean, it, it's, and, and we're working the plan and we're, and we're hitting our marks. We just, you know, it just, it just takes a while. Yeah, this is a chance yeah. to pump up the teams a little bit, but yeah. you know, a year out of joining the Tower of Five competition wise, you know, where is UCF? How well do you think, you know, I, I think I, I'm really excited. I mean, even, you know, even though, uh, you know, obviously basketball, it's the number one basketball league, men's basketball league, number one in the country. It is a powerhouse. I mean, you literally have teams that have losing records in the Big 12 getting in the NCAA tournament. Or maybe close to losing records. I don't quote me on the losing, but it's very either 500. And uh, um, they're on the fence at least, I know that. Um, so, you know, the fact that we beat two teams this year in men's basketball that were in the Sweet 16, I know we can do it. Uh, I think all of our sports can transition. This is still a very, I want to make sure this is very clear. This is still a very competitive conference that we're in. And we're going to have a target on our back this whole time next year. And so we have to, we have to be focused as a team, as a coaching staff, as an administration, be very focused about the last year of our conference. So in preparedness for the first year in the Big 12, because you know what? I don't, they're very, they're, they're well-funded programs, and there's a lot of, and it's, sports are very big in the Big 12, and they are very, very competitive. As you guys saw, we have a really good softball team. We went up there to Oklahoma, and they're pretty good, too. They just won the national championship. Pretty good, huh? So uh, um, I, I, I think our, the one thing I'll tell you, we have the right coaches here. I hope I never have to hire another coach as long as I'm here. And uh, I really believe in them. And I believe that we can make, we can p compete for conference championships in the Big 12. You compete for conference championships in the Big 12, you can win national championships. You kind, of alluded, a, huh? you kind of alluded to it earlier, UCS has been a little bit of a little brother, treated that way in Florida. Oh, yeah. How much does this change I, that? I think it's not just Florida though. I think you get those, I think it's like the little puppy you see on the street, and it's like, oh, they're you know, like really act like they pat you on the head, it's like, oh, you're, you're cute. Yeah, you're, like, <laughs> yeah, you're so cute. Yeah, you, yeah, I know you're cute. Yeah, I like you. But you're, but, you know, but, you're, but you're not them. You know, it's one of those type of things. We're going to be them. We're going to be them. And so uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, the goal is I've got a chip on my shoulder. I, I, you know, I get in these meetings, and you, you're around other ADs, and, just because they're 18 to 22 year olds might be a little better than your 18 to 20 year old doesn't mean that they're better. We're gonna show people who we are and uh, you know, we're just getting started. Um, this, this, this emerging brand we have here will be a national brand. And, I will, and, and um, you know, we just gotta get people uh, in the big trouble to start calling us UCF and not Central Florida. So, <laughs> so I think, you know, so every time, you know, was, no, I like to yield to the gentleman from Central Florida. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, UCF, and we'll, we'll get that. They'll be calling us UCF for everybody all the, across the country. And uh, so I'm, 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 I've always had a chip on my shoulder. I've always, we've always taken the low, road less traveled uh, my career. And so this is no different. And you know what? We're going to make a huge splash, literally and figuratively. And uh, uh, I, I really believe, and, but we can't do it alone. We gotta, it takes a community. It takes it takes the campus, it takes donors, it takes civic leaders, it takes our student athletes, it takes our coaches, it takes everybody to buy in into this. And if you're not, then I mean, I'm talking about people to pick up your trash. I believe that with all, all my heart. I believe that everybody has to be one of the one of the greatest illustrations of that. The guy that cooks food for us over there at the Garvey Center, our chef, he's bought in. He. Not even from here, he put UCF on his license plate and he buys it, he cares. Every time he prepares a meal for our student athletes, he cares about their fueling. And, and that's just one example, one example. And that's the, type of, that's the type of people we need because we got a long ways to go. This is just the beginning, folks. This is not the end. 
This is what we've worked hard for. This is what all of our, our uh, people that were Florida Technical University dreamed of. But this is the beginning. This is the beginning of, of a new era of, of, of UCF, not only academically, but also athletically. Terry, you talked, I mean, you talked about, um, you know, when you first got here, you, guys were talking, you and Gus were talking about national championships, yeah. playing in the college football playoff, getting in the college football playoff. Now you guys, next year, obviously, it's a much better pathway to get to the playoff. Yeah. How much is that? I mean, it feels like you know, from where UCF was maybe in 2017 to being you know, on the outside looking in to maybe possibly getting into into a championship. I mean, how does that just show kind of the progression that this program has gone? That's the goal. I mean, you compete. You know, you there you compete for national championships. You compete for conference and national championships. And I I, I really believe we can do it. I I I think we have some work to do. Uh, I think we have to raise our operating capitals. Uh, I think we have some facility. Um, we have to tweak some facility stuff, and uh, um, but um, I, that's that's the goal: is to win national championships. And, and uh, we're in the competition business. I mean, at the, we 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 are educators and around what around about in a, in a way because the focus is academics. We don't talk enough as practitioners. We don't talk enough about the academic uh, side of college athletics. I mean, I know we put it out on graphics and we tweet out stuff, but that is what we do. That's our core principles. And we're constantly challenging our own core principles so they remain relevant. That is, get an education, get a degree, and then get a job. But we are in the competition business, and that's what most people see. So our whole existence is preparing young people for the classroom and life after college. Most of our student athletes do not go to college. I mean, do, do, so do, do not go to the pros. Most first student athletes do not go to the pros. And so, so we have to prepare them for that. But why they're here, we want them to have an unbelievable opportunity to be highly successful on the playing surfaces. And I think we can do that. When you hear ADs or, or, or people say you can't be good at both, that's bunk. That's not, that's not we're, gonna, we're gonna be able to do that here. Uh, but it takes resources, it takes resources. And uh, so first and foremost, academics, life after college, jobs, and then competition. If you take care of that and your discipline and, and your in your pursuits on a daily basis, you can be a highly productive program. There's no question in my mind we can be a top 25 program in the Learfield Cups and all those, the Directors Cups, uh, in every one of our sports. There's no question in my mind. But we just have to have the right people involved to do it. Just a lot of you talk about how this is the beginning of a new era. You got the Navy rights, they'll take care of the big 12 time of the Iron now. So what else could be We've got some good news coming up too. We've got some more good news. Do you want me to give it to you now? Yeah. Please. No, no. <laughs> he's like, no. He said, no, don't. He said, no. He said, no. He's one of our students. He's not another. No. Uh, um, we, we still got a lot of work to do. I mean, we've got, we're, we, we're not done. We, we, we had news, good news today. Um, you know, the naming rights, F, FBC mortgage, it's huge for our program. Uh, we've got some other things in the work, in the hopper, on sponsorships uh, and, and gifts. And uh, you know we'll hopefully be announcing those uh, fairly soon. Um, so um, you know we're just we're still working on that. We're we've just uh, sent out our ad to advertise for design for football campus, to advertise for our architect. Uh, we're putting together it, it, it. Just so you know, it takes a long time. Uh, in the state of Florida, it takes about six weeks to put those advertisements out. And then you have to score things, and then you narrow them down, and then you hire. So it's not a real fast process, but I think once we get to that process, we'll be able to move pretty quickly. Um, what you see in football campus may not, what we introduced last summer, may not be exactly uh, the way it is going to be uh, going forward um, because of change of, you know, in, in philosophy and maybe, maybe priorities. Um, but one of the things that's most glaring is just the upper bowl, the south end zone. Uh, you know, I, when we did those, when we did the football campus concept, um, I never saw a game here. Um, I've been in the stadium before. I've done a lot of research prior to this, but like the South Florida game kind of changed my mind when we were in that end zone and uh, putting it in loge boxes the way the, the campus was proposed. Football campus probably won't do that now. I will look at some other type of premium areas because I don't want to lose the denseness of the, the fan base up there because there's no question in my mind our fans help will us to win that game because of that end zone. And so I don't want to lose that. So we have to be really um, cautious 
about not losing this great atmosphere. And uh, you know, that was one of the things I was telling a bunch of the ADs. Uh, 